Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here with Switch Adapted Toys and today I'm going to be showing you how to adapt this Fisher-Price robot. Uh, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, please hit the like and subscribe. It really does help us out in a huge way, so thanks in advance for that. Uh, so without further ado, let's just get into it. All the electrical components are in the base and so you can just twist the body and he pops off and we're going to set that aside. And then we're going to flip the toy over and remove the screws on the bottom. All right, so with those screws removed, we should re be able to remove the bottom. And there are some wires that are going to that battery compartment, so just be careful on what you're, you're, you're pulling on. Now this is the front of the toy right here. We need to get to this circuit board, so I'm going to remove these wheels. Kind of get them out of the way. And then there are four screws that hold down this circuit board. All right, so you can see there are a bunch of wiring harnesses attached to this board. Uh, I'm gonna start by removing this one and I think that will allow me to, to kind of flip the circuit board over because I need to see the bottom side or what really is the top side of the circuit board. All right, so with the circuit board flipped over, you can see that there's four rubber buttons there. Now, two of these buttons operate the same button on the toy, uh, so we only need to adapt one. Now, sometimes you can kind of figure other places on the board that are a little bit easier to solder. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to identify a better place than just removing one of these pink buttons, and that exposes this disc. Now, these discs have two sides. You can see they're kind of interwoven circles. Um, so we need to put uh, solder and our wires on both halves of those discs. Now it's important that we don't have any solder that kind of crosses over from one side of the disc to the other. Otherwise, the toy is just gonna constantly go off. Um, so ideally, we try to find other places on the board. Um, if you find another place on the board that you can solder that operates this uh, this disc, uh, let us know in the comments. Um, I wasn't able to find it, but there are smarter people out there than I. Uh, so we're gonna do one for each button. Uh, so I'm gonna remove one on each side. And we're gonna drill our holes through the front face of the toy. Uh, that allows us to get our, our cords in and then we'll solder them. Uh, and I'll show you what we need to do just to make sure that uh, when the, these buttons are pressed, it doesn't you know, knock our connections off or disconnect anything. Let's get started by drilling our holes in the front face. All right, so we wanna drill our hole as close to this bottom as possible. Uh, that way we can slide underneath that circuit board. So I'm just marking a couple places where I think would be good places to, to, to drill and then we can drill our holes. All right, so now we need to prepare our headphone jacks. Uh, if you get a splitter, you'll get two wires out of it, which is exactly what we need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and snip off the male end, and that leaves me with two uh, headphone jacks. What we need to do is remove the outside casing and you can see inside here, there are three wires. Uh, ours has a white wire, a red wire, and a bunch of bare wires. Um, yours might have different colors. What we're gonna need to do is actually combine two of these wires. And you might have to play around with it to figure out which wires you need to combine. Uh, basically what we're dealing with, this is what's called a TRS connector, or like a stereo headphone jack. So there's a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. A lot of buttons are made with TS connectors, so they just have a tip and a sleeve. So we basically need to figure out uh, which two wires are the ring and the sleeve, and we need to combine those together. So, or we basically, in other words, we need to isolate which wire goes to the tip. Um, you can do that by stripping the wires back and kind of twisting two of them together and kind of connecting it to a toy and seeing if it works. For a lot of the headphone jack wires that we have seen, uh, if you have a white wire, oftentimes the white wire will be that tip and that one that you need to keep separate. But that's not the case for all the toys. So you do need to kind of figure 
out um, your specific headphone jack. Ours, I know we need to combine the red wire and the bare wire and leave the white wire separate. So let's do that. I'm going to remove some of the casing on the red wire and then just twist the red and bare wires together. Now I've got a bunch of exposed wire here that I would like to put a heat shrink wire cover on just to make sure that it doesn't accidentally touch something else on the board and short something out. Uh, we're basically putting this sleeve back on the wire. All right, so I'm just gonna basically cut my heat shrink wire cover to the size that I want, slip it over the wire, and then use a heat gun to shrink that down. If you didn't have heat shrink wire cover, uh, you could use electrical tape, uh, but get yourself some heat shrink wire cover. It, it definitely comes in handy. And then I'm gonna remove the tip of the white wire. All right, so now I need to do that again for my other headphone jack. All right, now that I've got my two headphone jack wires ready, I can go ahead and slip them through the front face. All right, now what we wanna do is put some zip ties on the inside of the toy around the wire, and that will basically act like a barrier. So if a child were to pull on the toy, uh, they don't just rip the whole cord out. You want to cinch it down as tight as possible and make sure that it doesn't slip. Um, if your zip tie is slipping a little bit, what you can do is add some CA glue or super glue or, or hot glue uh, kind of around the wire and that will kind of lock it in place and keep it from slipping. Uh, the big thing is you just want to make sure that that cord is not going to get accidentally pulled out of the toy. And I'm going to go ahead and just snip off the extra zip tie. Just to be safe, I'm gonna put some CA glue around those zip ties. And then this activator will dry it instantly. All right, so I'm gonna kind of bring the front face kind of to the opposite side of the toy, and I'm gonna flip the circuit board uh, over on so I'm exposing the top um, I'm trying to do it this way because I want the headphone jack wires kind of coming out the fr what is the front of the toy but when this gets flipped back down so the wires are coming out this way so you just kind of want to get things lined up I'm even gonna throw a piece of tape down here just to hold things in place because um, there's a lot of this the circuit board is just kind of moving around and there's not a lot of space with all these wires hooked up so I'm gonna put some scotch tape on there just to hold everything in place as I'm working all right, one key thing here is you wanna make sure your wires are nice and neat. So make sure you twist them together and then make sure there's not any stray wires hanging about. Uh, and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get some solder on our wires and that'll make it a lot easier when we're trying to get it onto the circuit board. So one good thing to get is a flux pen. Uh, what this is, is, is basically just helps prevent the circuit board from getting burned up when we go to solder to it. So um, especially when you're dealing with these discs because it can be a little bit tricky to solder to those discs. So pick up a flux pen. The best way I find to solder to these discs is also to get a little bit of solder on the disc itself. Um, so I'm just gonna do that now. Sometimes it can be a bit hard to get the solder to stick to the disc but using that flux pin will definitely help. And then once I got a little bit of solder on the disc, I'm gonna solder one wire to just the half of that disc. And then I'm gonna solder to the other wire to the other half of this disc. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing for the other side.
All right, so before we move on, you wanna plug in a button and make sure that everything works as expected. Uh, if, remember, if you've unplugged any of the wiring harnesses, plug those back in, uh, but just make sure everything's working before we, we move on. All right, so that one worked. And that won't work, so we're good. All right, so now that we know that everything works, uh, what we want to do is add some hot glue to uh, these discs just to kind of lock everything in place. Uh, these con uh, connections are, are pretty weak, so we just need to make sure that everything's gonna stay put. While my hot glue gun heats up, uh, the other thing that we need to do is, if you look on these buttons, there's these two little pegs that actually make contact with these switches. Um, we need to kind of remove some of that material on that one button so that that peg doesn't knock our connections loose. So there's just two screws we need to unscrew on both of the buttons and then um, we're going to just cut away some of that material. Alrighty, so just make sure you're cutting away the material from the, the proper uh, peg. And all I'm gonna do is just use some snips just to kind of remove some of that. All right, and then we can put them back. All right, now with our hot glue gun, let's go ahead and put some glue on those discs just to make sure we lock everything in place. You wanna make sure that the tip of your hot glue gun doesn't make contact with your soldering points so it doesn't accidentally reheat that solder. All right, so now we can kind of put everything back together. First thing we wanna do is kind of get the circuit board back into place. And we can slide the front face in. It's a little hard to do with all these wires. And then we need to replace the four screws that held the circuit board down. And the screws that held the circuit board down, they are a little bit smaller. So just make sure you're putting the right screws back into place. Now we need to replace the wheels that we took out. And the wheel with this extra little uh, piece here goes on the side with the switch. Alrighty, and then we can replace the bottom and screw in all the screws. All right, so let's plug in another button and just make sure that everything works now that we've got it put back together. Blue square. And then let's test the other button. Woo. There we go. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, you know, the circuit board is a little hard to deal with, soldering to those discs and just all the wires in there, um, but it's definitely doable. If you take your time, I think you can definitely do it. What's nice about this toy is that uh, if you keep it on level one, the toy will stay stationary. It won't move back and forth. So if you're playing on like a table or something like that, you don't want it rolling around. That's kind of useful. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please hit the like button and hit subscribe. It really does help us out in a big way. So thanks in advance for that. And we're posting new videos all the time uh, showing you how to adapt different toys. We also have an Etsy store if you're in the market for purchasing one of these toys and you don't want to go through the hassle of adapting it yourself. Uh, the proceeds there just go help fund what we're doing here. So uh, I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick up one of those toys already adapted and ready to play with. If you want to find out more about Switch Adapted Toys, you can visit our website at www.switchtoys.org. Uh, there we've got a ton of different resources for Switch Adapting Toys, including files for you to 3D print your own Switch button. So they're all completely free, so check those out. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff on there. And if you've got a group or an organization and you want to adapt toys kind of on a bigger scale, you can form what we call a Switch Chapter, where we kind of help you through that process uh, so that you can serve your community in that way. And if you want to find out more information about that, you can do so on our website, again, www.switchtoys.org. But I guess that's it. My name's Eric, and until next time, we'll see you.
Switch, Adapted Toys, making play possible.